What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 build video. Now shout out to the DoD Disciples of Doom. And in today's build video, I'm going to talk about pulse resistance builds and hazard protection builds. And in fact, I have one to show you. This one is going to make you immune to everything, even the hunters, even the hunters. I was going to use some uh, cursy words, but we all know how we feel about the hunters. Sometimes we love them, and man, sometimes they're just, ugh. Anyways, this build is going to help you stay, quote unquote, invisible under the radar, if you will. And it will also keep you immune to status effects, pulses, anything of that nature. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video. I hope, uh, hope you find it helpful and informative. And if so, just don't forget to support the channel by hitting that thumbs up. You can subscribe for more Division content. I will be uploading every single day for the Division universe, whether it be Division 1, 2, Heartland, and so forth. But all right, so I hope you enjoy the ride. Hit that like, as always, and let's uh, jump into it. Now, the thumbnail stated that I had 120% pulse resistance. And, well, mm, let's get, let's look at that. So if I were to put pulse resistance mods all over my build, right, um, I would get up to actually 125% pulse resistance. Now, pulse resistance is actually really easy to uh, get right now because we have the pulse resistance mods. We have the y'all gear that gives you pulse resistance from the brand set bonus. And we also have system corruption that can give you pulse resistance from that gear set bonus. But not only that, but every single specialization in the game gives you pulse resistance as well. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in this video is pulse resistance, hazard protection, and, you know, what you should know about this, because things will be changing uh, pretty soon. And what I'm referring to are your specializations. So let's go over here to the specializations. So let's just pick Firewall, for example. Okay. So going over to Firewall, and then we scroll down, I believe it's in the bottom right. Yep, right here. So it says a vital protection, and then it gives you 50% pulse resistance, right? Go over to the gunner. Let's go down to the bottom right. Vital protection gives you 50% pulse resistance. Technician, bottom right, pulse resistance. Demolitionist, bottom right, pulse resistance. You guys see this? This uh this trend here? Survivalist, bottom right, pulse resistance. And sharpshooter, bottom right, passive talent. Vital protection, giving you 50% pulse resistance. Now, all of these are going to be changed and revamped in a upcoming update. So, for right now, you are able to stack pulse resistance without even trying because you already have 50% out the gate. Now, as far as hazard protection and explosive resistance, you can only have 10% just from your watch level, but having that 50% pulse resistance is pretty OP coming from those specializations, especially when they are now adding all of these brand set gear sets, you know, spotter, flatline, all of these things that revolve around the pulse. So having a build like this one is going to be pretty vital up until they've revamped the specializations. And then we'll revisit this. So anyways, uh, looking at this, we are running three pieces of y'all, like I told you, because the brand set bonus gives you that per, uh, pulse resistance, right? And then we're using two pieces Seska for the hazard protection. So what's cool about this build, and I'll show you the different ways you can mold this, because you can still have that 100% pulse resistance and be immune to several other status effects all at the same time. And then you can have something like this with spotter, flatline, linked laser pointer, and you're pulsing them right back. So they're pulsing, they're like, you know, what's going on here? And then you can pulse them right back and then you're the one that gets all that extra damage. So it's pretty legit. Um, let's jump into the different ways you can uh, do this. And it all revolves around your mods. 
So as of right now, you can see I'm at 125% pulse resistance. And I'm sure a lot of you are like, oh, 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 125%? You, you, you only need 100%. <laughs> yes. I mean, you're, you're right. I, I get it. However, the pulse resistance isn't against the pulse itself. It's only against the effect duration. So if you test it, you will see that it lowers the pulse effect duration of whoever's pulsing you. However, it does not make you completely, you know, negating the pulse. Especially if you're using a linked laser pointer, you can still pulse enemies even if they're at full pulse resistance. Because the linked laser pointer will still pulse you instantly, but the effect duration is not going to be there. But you, you're still getting pulsed, if that makes sense. Now, as far as like a scanner pulse, a, uh, what's the drone? A uh, tactician drone, I believe is what it's called. These things are meant to scan the area and pulse you. The linked laser pointer, all you have to do is aim at that thing and it pulses it. So it's, it's a little different. One is a scanning mechanic and the other one is a point pointy shooty mechanic. So you have to remember that. Now the 125%, yeah, that was me just flexing. I'm like, how high can I get this, this stupid thing? And this isn't even with uh, high mods. So looking over here, I had to grind the pulse resistance mods and I'm missing several percentages off of each of these mods. But overall, I just wanted to show you how high you can get that pulse resistance. Now, yes, you don't need 125%. So in case, uh, let's say you're playing Countdown, right? Now, if you're playing Countdown, what I would do is I would switch a mod off and then put on a Disrupt Resistance mod. And I'll show you exactly why. So here's Disrupt Resistance right here. And then go over to my stats and scroll down. You can see I'm still at 116% pulse resistance, but now I am at 100% disrupt resistance. So against something like, say, the Hunters in Countdown, for example, now I am immune to the disrupt and I am resistant to the pulse at the same time. So in theory, whenever we play Countdown, I could run up there to the Hunter, he goes to hit his little pulse to disrupt you and mess you up, and it should not do anything to me at all, in theory. Well, we'll test it out. We'll see if this is broken or not. Now, what you can also do, because this is all like a math game, and it because I'm not using max mods, it's a little harder for me to switch them out because my other ones are maxed out, and it looks a lot better on paper. But let's see. Um, so the hunters will disrupt you with their pulse. What's another uh, type of status they would do? Would they shock you? Well, let, let's just say shock, for example. So now I have shock on the backpack, disrupt on the chest piece, and now if I go over to my stats, I'm still over that 100% pulse resistance, but now I am 100% disrupt resistant and I am 100% shock resistant as well. Now, a lot of you would say, yeah, but that's only for PVE. That's only for the hunters. That's very situational. And you know what? You're right. You're, you are right. So what I would do for PVP... A lot of you, I'm sure your ears are perking up PVP. What I would do for that is I would take off the disrupt. I would put on a burn or bleed. So here's a bleed and then vice versa with the shock. So I'd take shock off because I put bleed on the chest piece. I'll put burn on the backpack. And now if I go to my stats, now I'm over the 100% pulse resistance, and now I'm 100% bleed resistant and 100% burn resistant all at the same time. So now the pulse won't touch me, their bleed or burn won't touch me, and I'm 90% hazard overall. So whatever it is they're throwing at me, I'm going to you know not catch that effect as long like at all. It, it, it'll catch that effect and then it'll go away. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to figure out different ways to become immune or resistant to every situation, whether it be hunters and PVP or PVE, whether it be, you know, players in PVP trying to pulse you all of that jazz. And this in theory should be able to make yourself resistant for everything. 
Um, it just depends on how you work those mods. If you are not you know, putting the right mods in the right slots, you're not going to be fully immune or fully resistant to whatever it is. The mods are key to making this build. You can put the build together, but if you do not have the mods to put in these mod slots, you're not going to become, you know, fully immune or fully resistant to whatever it is you're trying to do. Okay. So let's finally talk about the build. Starting with the specialization, I am using the technician specialization for that linked laser pointer. That's the only reason why I'm using it. So if I look right here on my Kingbreaker and I go to the laser pointer, it says linked laser pointer. And obviously this still looks like a assault, you know, an AK assault rifle. This is supposed to look like the uh, TKB408. And uh, Yannick and Morton on Twitter have both confirmed that they will be changing this. Just for whoever's about to say something in the comments. All right, here we go. So linked laser pointer. It is a technician laser pointer that pulses targets at which it's aimed. There's no scanning or anything like that. It's you aim it and it pulses it. Now, the initial pulse, it will pulse anything in the game. Now, depending on their pulse resistance, that's where the effect duration comes into play. So you could pulse them, but then it's going to go right away. And then you can pulse them, and then it'll go right away. Um, it just depends on their pulse resistance. So right here, Kingbreaker with that linked laser pointer is key. Now, it, talking about my weapons, my primary is the King Breaker. Now, this one is God Rolled, Max AR, Health, and Damage to Targets out of Cover. I have it upgraded once to Expertise Level 1. Even though my character is Expertise Level 5, I have only been able to upgrade this one once. Mainly because I upgraded my Damn Eagle Bearer five times. But that's a different story. Now, looking at these numbers, it starts off at 103.4k total damage. I do have that damage to targets out of cover, and it comes with flatline, so it amplifies my weapon damage by 20% to pulsed enemies. And after two kills, it will immediately pulse whatever next enemy that I shoot. Now, because I'm going to test this up against the Hunters, I'm also going to have the Scorpio for a little close quarter combat. And then for my sidearm, it's a backup boomstick, but I'm not really using it. Um, I'm mainly just using the Kingbreaker. Unless someone decides to rush me, I'll use the uh, Scorpio. Now, looking at the build itself, I'm using the three pieces of Yawl. That gives me hazard protection, weapon damage, and pulse resistance. That is the best combination you could have for this build. Hazard, because you need hazard. Weapon damage, because you need weapon damage. And pulse resistance, because you want pulse resistance. You see what I'm saying? Now, for the two pieces of Seska, again, these are the best that you can you know, have for this build. Because the brand set bonuses we get from this brand set, hazard protection, which we need, and crit chance, which helps our weapon damage. Now, the mask is the only, like, uh, what, wild card. Now, I'm using this mask, the chill out mask, because it comes with two mod slots. That way, I'm able to double down on the pulse resistance, and that's how I'm getting over that 100%, and then I still have, you know, mod slots that I can place, burn, bleed, shock, disrupt, whatever it is you need for your situation. Now, the problem with this chill out mask, and a lot of people have pointed it out, is that it is a named Heligard mask, but the brand set bonuses have disappeared uh, as soon as this update went live. So this isn't like something you've done. It is something that is in their coding, and it's not supposed to be this way. So expect them to say something and fix the chill out mask later on, because I'm only at 1.5 million armor. But I'm pretty sure, let me see if I have a normal Heligard. All right, so here's the Night Watcher. And even with 140k armor instead of the 170, you can see it would still give me more armor than I already have because of that 5% total armor brand set bonus that I'm not getting with the Chill Out Mask. Now let's see if I can find a... I'm pretty sure I have a maxed out Heligard uh, mask. That way I can show you the difference. I think it's a 100k armor difference. And so this mask being bugged actually hurts your builds, where as soon as they fix it, you'll get that bump right back. 
So let's see, um, that's the chill out mask. Let's go for a normal Heligard. Well, this one has max armor right here. So you can see that I, I'll still be at 1.5 million, but if I put this on, so let me show you. So if we go to stats and go down to defense, I'm at 1.46. So it's just, you know, it's um, rounding me up to 1.5, okay? So if I actually put on a normal Heligard with max armor, click on that, I went from 1.46 to now I'm at 1.53. So you can see that was a 70,000 armor difference. So you're losing 70,000 armor by running this build with the chill out mask currently, but it's worth it because you get the two mod slots and you couldn't have this much pulse resistance and hazard and be immune to certain skills and the pulse at the same time without this mask. Um, you could, but then you would lose resistance to some other status that you know you shouldn't be willing to sacrifice. Okay, so the chill out mask is bugged. I just explained it. I showed you, you know, what you're losing. So now let's talk about it. So this one is maxed out, max armor, and max hazard protection. I threw on there two pulse resistance mods. These are brand new mods that were added to the game for this update. And they are crucial to getting that 100% or over for the pulse resistance. Now going to the Seska pieces. Starting with the backpack, this is the Seska backpack. Now the Seska brand set bonuses we get from this build, 10% crit chance and 10% hazard protection. Now as far as the attributes go, we have max weapon damage, max hazard protection, and we have 5.5% crit chance. Now the mod, right now it's on disrupt because I want to test this against the hunters live with you guys. I should be able to become immune to that initial pulse and disrupt as soon as I run up on a hunter. Now I do have adrenaline rush on here. Um, it's just based off of RNG. Um, now as far as getting more damage, you could reroll this to concussion, you could reroll it to vigilance. But for me, it's just, you know, the hunters or, you know, players or whoever, they like to rush. So as soon as they get closer to you, you get that bonus armor on top of everything else, and then you can just mow them down because you're getting a lot of damage bonus from the spotter and the perfect flatline. Um, you don't really need the vigilance. This is more to increase survivability, but if you're okay with it, you could switch this off for vigilance or you know concussion, what have you, and still have a lot of fun. Now, the other piece of Seska are the gloves. Now, these are maxed out as well, max weapon damage, crit damage, and hazard protection. Now, I do have the three-piece y'all, so let's start off with the chest piece. So here's the y'all chest piece. Now, the y'all gear brand set bonuses I get from this build, 10% hazard, 5% weapon damage, and 40% pulse resistance. So just using three pieces of y'all with that specialization talent, you're already at 90%. So if I had a maxed out pulse mod, I would be just fine, but unfortunately, I do not. Now, looking at the attributes here, we have max explosive resistance and hazard and near max armor. I threw on there that pulse resistance mod, and then it comes with spotter. Now, spotter is, I would say, bugged, but I'm not 100% sure. Now, they reworked perfect spotter, and look at the differences here. So, spotter on the right shows amplified total weapon and skill damage. Perfect Spotter on the left says increases total weapon and skill damage. So the way that the description is written, it went from amplified, which is multiplicative, to increases, which is additive. Two different types of buffs. So in theory, the way it is written, normal Spotter should hit harder than Perfect Spotter. I'll test that later in a different build video. However, just know that the way these descriptions are written, they will be changed. They will not allow this to stay in the game, I promise you. So either they're going to change spotter to reflect perfect spotter, or they're going to change perfect spotter. But I believe that they took the amplified out because on the new weapon talent, 
perfect flat line, that's where you get amplified. So they're not going to do amplified on the chest piece and on the weapon because then you're just going to double dip, sort of like what we did last year with uh, Lady Death and Intimidate where we were double dipping with amplified, and then all of a sudden you're melting everything. Um, so I believe that they switched it to reflect that perfect spotter where it's just going to be an increase to weapon and skill damage and not amplified. So that's another thing we'll test out here in another video. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell because we are bringing you more content every single day. Now, looking at the holster, y'all gear, max armor, hazard, and crit damage. And then the last piece of y'all, knee pads, max armor, hazard, and crit damage. And that's the build. So you have uh, max pulse resistance and you have really stupid high hazard. And the way that you do your mods, which is key, remember that. If you're going to learn anything from this build video, make sure that you have the right mods in the right spots. For example, right now I'm running two pulse on my mask so I can change my chest piece out for, let's, what we agree on with the hunters? Shock, right? So shock and disrupt. So I have shock and disrupt maxed out. I have 90% overall hazard, and I have over 100% pulse resistance, all while using perfect flatline and spotter. Like, this, this build is stupid strong. Um, so yeah, let's look at the stats, and then we will go uh, show you what it's like. So 103k weapon damage, 35.5 crit chance, 81 crit damage, 75 headshot damage. We have 21% health damage, and then don't forget about the damage to targets out of cover, which is rolled on the weapon. Now the offensive tab, we have 46% all weapon damage bonus and 30% AR damage bonus. So every time I use the Kingbreaker, I'm starting off with 76% damage bonus total. For the gear talents, again, you could switch out a drill and rush if you feel comfortable doing so. I'm only doing this for the more armor and the more survivability using it. Um, we all know that the hunters like to rush you, and so do players. So getting that bonus armor will definitely help you out. And then, of course, I'm using that with spotter. Now going to the defensive tab, we're at 1.46 million armor, which it does round up to 1.5. And then we have over 100% pulse resistance with 90% overall hazard. And then, of course, with those mods that you're using, you could become 100% resistance to whatever it is you want, whether it be bleed, burn, blind, deaf, disorient, disrupt, ensnare, whatever it is you want. And that's the build, everyone. Now, remember that I do get 10% from my watch. So this is going to be my disclaimer I do for all of my build videos. So for this build video, I am watch level 3112. That means that all of these attribute boxes are maxed out 50 of 50. So if you are at or above shade level 1000 and you copy and paste my build with the mods, remember that, you should be able to get the exact same numbers and results that I am showing you. However, if you are not at shade level 1000 and you are below that, some of these attribute boxes will not be maxed out. So if you go to copy and paste my build, some of the numbers might be a little bit lower. It's okay. This is a very solid build. Just remember that if you want to get the most bang out of your buck, if you want to get the, uh, the most out of your builds, make sure you're at shade level 1000. That way your character is quote unquote min maxed. Now... Um, you don't have to become shade level 1000. It's not a requirement. It's just a recommendation. That way you get the most, you know, out of your builds. But all right, that is it, everyone. This is the pulse resistance and hazard build. I am Kamikaze Von Doom. Oh, this chick just, oh, okay. I was about to say, she just body blocked me. But uh, let's go ahead and do some live gameplay, and then we will get you out of here. So don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Support the channel by subscribing. We're about to hit 41,000 subscribers. Thank you all for the support. It's so great to see the community back at it again. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good year for everyone. All right, so I'm just going to join a random game. Nothing crazy. I just want to test this out against those hunters. 
and show you exactly what it's like. Now, I could ramp up the uh, pulse resistance up to that 125%, but I did notice with the hunters before that if I'm not 100% disrupt, they could still disrupt me. So I want to try to make sure that I am immune to both the disrupt and the pulse. That way, whenever they do that, it doesn't really affect me. So let's test it out. And let me know in the comment section what you guys think about the countdown, about the new pulse meta that everyone's trying out, and also what, what you all think about hazard protection and pulse resistance builds, especially knowing that the specialization revamps are coming, and it's going to take away 50% of your pulse resistance right there. So it's going to be a lot harder to get that max pulse resistance as soon as they do that. But all right, here we go. Countdown, baby. Now I go for the hunters immediately. <clears throat> it's looking like my teammates are following me. All right, good. I hope they are. Yeah, right, here we go. Let's see what happens. Now the hunter still hits like a truck. All right, see, I was immune to that. It still got my uh, my skill, but I was immune to that. Everyone else on my team, you can see they're all disrupted, but I'm not. So I can still use my uh, revive hive. That's legit. So now I'm immune to the hunters as well. That's good. Very good. Remember, use grenades. That's a good way to counter these hunters. Oop, pat yourself up, soldier. You're still in the fight. Oh, dang, I'm the highest shade level out of everyone in this game. All right, no worries, no worries. We've got this. It's almost down. Oh, come on, bro. Oh, he's down, come on. Shoot him, he's almost dead. Oh my god, he's going to go back and... Okay, good. I was about to say, man. Oh, the other guys aren't even shooting him. Oh. It was just me and Raccoon. Hey, I appreciate that, Raccoon. Thank you, sir. The other two guys are just watching us play the game. Need to focus fire and not spectate. Oh, but they're over there getting the drops, though. Alright, come on. Oop. Not Gaza. All right. Let's check it out against another hunter. He ran right past the boost. Come on, man. We got this. All right. So there's that one. There's going to be three hunters up here. You can see all three of them right there. Dang. Gaza almost got killed immediately. Bye bye. Ooh, the other hunter's sniping. Area secure. All right, one more hunter over here. We see him. Oop, he's sniping at me. See how I'm immune? Ooh, they still hit like a truck though. There we go. Nice. Yeah, that works really nice with the hunters. I like that. So now I'm just completely immune. I like it. So that hunter test worked. Um, let's go, uh, we'll try it out in uh, some PvP. All right, I'm going to finish this game, and uh, I will cut to me trying this out in PvP. So be right back, and enjoy. All right, well, welcome back. Um, before we do the PvP, 
I wanted to go up against these hunters at the end as well. Same build. I just uh, fast forwarded the uh, gameplay to the end. That way we can go up against these hunters as well and see how it goes. You can see how I'm still using my skills. I still have my revive hive, even though he tried to disrupt me. There's one more hunter right here that we need to try to get before it's over. I got you, bro. Get up, get up. All right, we have 19 seconds. Come on. Oh no, I used my, my uh, hive to pick up the other guy. Oh no. Oh no. Well, there goes that. GG's. GG's. I used my revive hive to pick up the other guy. I should have used that like a, like an airplane. Take care of myself before you take care of the other people. Ah, whatever. I was trying to help. Cost me a few uh, countdown requisition credits, but it's all good. All right. So that was our test for PvE. Now let's test it in PvP. So take off the disrupt for um, burn and bleed. So do do do. There's bleed on that one, and then take off the shock for burn. There we go. And now just a reminder: if I go to my stats, I'm at over a hundred percent pulse resistant and a hundred percent bleed and burn with ninety percent overall hazard. All right, let's test it out, see how it works. Um, actually, I'm not going to use the Scorpio for PvP. Uh, let me put on, hmm, eh, you know what? I'll, I'll do the Slayer, why not? All right, here we go. Let's see if uh, we find anyone in PvP real quick. Eh, we found five people, there we go, all right, cool. So we're going to do a game of PvP and then get out of here. As a reminder, I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions at all, just let me know. I will be glad to answer them. We have a great community, not only here on YouTube, but also on Twitter and Discord. And if you want links to either one of those, you can find it in the About Me section of my channel. So I hope to see you guys in both uh, Twitter and Discord. We have a few thousand people on both of those platforms. And we use Discord to not only help other clans, help other people on all platforms, but it's also a way to stay informed and up to date with the latest and greatest news. And then same with Twitter. You'll find me on there and then you get you know my conversations with the developers, what they say officially and unofficially. And yeah, it's just, it's a good time. We have a great community behind us and I can't wait for the rest of this year. But all right, so let's, hmm, let's uh, test this out in some PVP. All right, here we go. Boom, ba dum, boom, ba dum, boom, 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 ba dum, boom. Come on. Oh, I don't need a revive hive for PvP either, so let me switch that as well. Neutralize all enemies before you run out of Let's do the jammer. There we go. Alright, let's go. I chose the Slayer just to put on my back. It's cool. And it shoots out little uh, snowballs. They're pretty fun. Rogue, 
source of seeker mine detected. All right, let's see what's going on here. Three are up top. One is uh, lollygagging behind. Oh, there he is. Rogue stinger hive detected. An agent needs assistance. Mm, now they're all up top. And this guy's just going to follow me. Both of them. Oh, I couldn't get the one behind me. Damn. I got the other two guys, though. So. Boom, ba -dum, boom, boom. Uh-oh, they're getting the other revive. Get them! You guys see that skill build? Like, go out of his way to shoot a cam at me and it didn't even touch me? I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, they got the other revive. Damn. I'm the only one with a kill. Oh, come on, guys. Just run out there and dying. Look. Oh, my God, dude. What a team. What a team. They're already dead again. Stetus Lapidus, man. Got to play smarter than that. And now they're pushing our spawn. Yep. All right, they're about to spawn camp, you guys. Boost about to come online. Gotta stay back when it comes to that shit. Agent down. Okay. Boost online. Got him. Boost is over here behind me. I think they're gonna try to get that pickup though. An agent Too far away. shooting me. Chaos! There was a firefight! It's pretty fun, though. Oh, they're there. I see you. There you go. They had the idea. Yeah, push mid. And we had a blue, but they're all going to leave now. Oop, behind me. Oh, nice unbreakable. Oh, it's unbreakable. Saved him. His unbreakable saved him. Nice. GG's. I think I needed one more bullet to kill him on that one. You're running low on lives. I, I know. My, uh... My... <laughs> Ooh, these teammates. Me and the other guy are eh, about even. We're five and six, but the other two guys, oh and seven. Damn. That's why we're about to get mercy. Uh, too many of them. And the other guys ran around the corner. All right. Damn, they got my revive again? What's up with that? Oh, uh, the other two guys left. They went 0 in like 8 and then they left our game. That sucks, dude. Ooh, 
Oop. Die! Oh, I got him. <laughs> I'm still getting my kills, but I needed a better team for that one. But all right, so I showed you what it's like against the hunters. I showed you what it's like against the players. Um, the agents do freak out when they try to use your, their skills and it doesn't even touch you. I think that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, nice. GG's to everyone. That was a good match. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone. I am Kamikaze Von Doom. And this has been your Pulse Resistance slash Hazard Protection build to where you can stay immune and invisible at the same time. And don't forget to hit that like, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone. Peace.